Thank you so much for your interest in our poster. My name is Alia, and I will be talking to you about our approach for reconstructing the gene regulatory landscape of pediatric brain tumors. Just a little bit of a background about pediatric brain tumors. These are the leading cause of cancer-related death in children. They differ significantly from their adult counterparts in clinical manifestations, in molecular features, as well as in developmental origins. Several studies to date have shown that pediatric brain tumors arise from deregulation of normal regulatory programs operating during development of the brain. So our aim in this study is to identify key regulatory programs that alter normal brain development towards tumor genesis. In order to achieve this, we've obtained a tumor cohort and a normal cohort. The tumor cohort comes from the Open Pediatric Brain Tumor Atlas and the Children's Brain Tumor Tissue Consortium. These provide samples that span diverse types of pediatric brain tumors. The normal cohort comes from the Human Brain Development Atlas, and these span multiple brain regions ranging in age from embryonic development through adulthood. So our first step in this approach is to define the regulatory modules that characterize the normal and the tumor cohorts. So for this, we've used the scenic workflow, which starts by inferring co-expression modules between transcription factors and candidate target genes. Scenic then identifies modules for which the regulator's binding motive is significantly enriched across the target genes, creating regulants with only direct targets, discarding any of the indirect targets that might have arise during the inference of the co-expression modules. The last step in the scenic workflow is to score the activity of each regulant in each sample. Running this workflow on our normal and tumor cohorts, we found that 46% of the regulants are overlapping between the normal developing brain samples and the pediatric brain tumor samples. Clustering the normal and the tumor samples using the overlapping regulants showed that several pediatric tumor types co-cluster and resemble distinct stages of brain development at the regulin activity level. For instance, cluster 4 here, 54% of this cluster were tumors, whereas the rest were coming from normal developing brain samples. Most of the normal developing brain samples were from four-month stage, and for the tumors, most of the samples were craniopharyngioma tumor type. In the future, we will study such instances in more detail and match tumor types to distant brain development stages. We've also done a differential targeting analysis across the normal and the tumor cohorts. So the heat map here shows that we have five clusters of regulants that are distinct in their targets as well as their um, size. We've also run a gene set enrichment analysis on the targets of RIS regulants, and we found that they are functionally very divergent. Our next step would be to identify which tumor type and which development brain stage engage which kinds of regulants um, engage which kinds of regulants. So for instance, we can see here that medulloblastoma engage regulants from cluster one and cluster two whereas craniopharyngioma engage regulants from cluster 4 and cluster 5. Such instances would be interesting to follow up upon. We next looked at the targets of non-overlapping regulants. So non-overlapping regulants means that these regulants are exclusively active in either the normal cohort or the tumor cohort. So while the regulants were non-overlapping, their targets were significantly overlapping. Nevertheless, we still see a big difference at the functional level between the targets of the private regulants for the tumor and the normal. So we attempted to construct a tumor private network. So the first thing we did here is to remove all the overlapping regulants in order to end up with only regulants that are exclusively active in the tumor cohort. And then we reconstructed the network based on the activity um, the, the activity scores the overlap between the targets and the size of the regulants. So the network here shows the top one percentile of the regulants according to their correlation coefficient based on their activities. The size of the node reflects the size of the regulin, and the thickness of the edge reflects the percentage of overlap between the targets between each two connected nodes. 
We then ran a community detection algorithm on the tumor pilot network and identified nine communities. This stratifies dragonlands into groups that actually work together to perform distinct functional activities. And we know that they work together because they are highly correlated at the activity level. However, they achieve their functions either by engaging similar, um, by engaging similar downstream targets like this cluster here, which have very high overlap in the targets between the nodes, or by engaging distinct downstream targets, reflected here by the thin edges that connect um, the nodes, showing that the percentage of overlap of the targets is lower here. Similarly, we find that dragonlands that are exclusively observed to be active in normal samples fall into distant groups or communities. The network here again shows the top one percentile of the dragonlands based on their correlation coefficient. And um, it's composed of five communities with distant functional roles. In some communities, these roles are carried out by conversions on common target genes, like here, or by engaging distinct targets. To conclude, we find striking similarity between the regulants involved in several pediatric brain tumors and normal development stages in the brain, as well as distant programs engaged only in the tumor context. We have seen evidence that regulants shared by tumor and normal samples may activate distinct functional processes. In the future, we will further explore our observation that in both tumor and normal samples, regulants work together in communities to direct transcriptional cascades. And we will also pursue a deeper understanding of this high level coordination through network analysis of both regulants and their targets. Thank you once again for your interest and please feel free to reach out for any comments or suggestions you might have. Thank you.